The first type of IV tubing that I want to go over is what's called primary IV tubing. Uh, this is just regular IV tubing. It's the most common tubing that we use for adult patients. And the one thing that you need to know about this is I'm going to open this roller clamp here and you'll watch those drops uh, start to come out. It takes 10 to 15 drops to deliver one cc of fluid to the patient. The next type of IV tubing is what's called mini drip IV tubing. I'm going to open the roller clamp here and you're going to see that those drops are much smaller. And so with this type of tubing, it takes 60 drops in order to deliver one cc of fluid to the patient. So you're going to use this type of tubing if you want to run fluid more slowly. So like in pediatrics or renal failure patients or if you're using it as a piggyback IV infusion. Uh, the next type of tubing that's available to us is uh, called Y tubing or blood tubing. And we use this tubing anytime we want to run intraoperative blood products. The reason that we have uh, Y tubing here is because it allows us to hang blood products on uh, one line and then to uh, flush those blood products in with saline on the other line. The last type of tubing that we have here is specialized tubing that fits into an IV pump. This is called IV pump tubing. And you use this if you want to run a piggyback infusion at a very specific rate. And it's got this weird design here because it allows this uh, tubing to fit into an IV pump. The last type of tubing I want to cover is called secondary IV tubing here. And this is very short IV tubing. And you'll notice it has no bolus ports, but it does have a roller clamp. The use for secondary IV tubing is mainly to run in antibiotics, uh, uh, piggyback into a primary IV line like so. So now let's look at what's on the primary and mini drip IV tubing. The very first thing that you're going to notice is this one-way valve here. And the purpose behind that is it prevents me from when I'm injecting something, it prevents me from injecting that back up into the IV bag. So this one-way valve is going to prevent any drug or any piggyback infusion from going backwards up into the, to the IV bag. In the case of secondary IV tubing connecting into a regular uh, lure lock port, it's actually possible for when I inject drug here, if this secondary line is open and I inject a large amount of drug, which is common during anesthetic induction, you'll notice that this fluid can go backwards all the way back up into the secondary IV line if the secondary line is open. The next thing that you're going to notice on this tubing is they have this cap here, and this cap opens this system to the atmosphere. And where this is going to apply is when you're hanging fluid from glass containers. Let's demonstrate that. So when hanging uh, fluid from a glass container, you're going to notice that no fluid is running even though the roller clamp is open because this glass bottle is not like a regular IV bag that can collapse. So in order to get it to run, you need, you need to be able to vent this system somehow. So when using primary and uh, mini drip tubing, all you need to be able to do to vent the system is to open up this cap and you see that the fluid starts running. So when using tubing that does not have a vent system like uh, blood tubing here, you have to vent the system with a needle in order to get this fluid from a glass container to run. So what I do is I just grab a regular needle here and I go ahead and bend it a little bit and then you'll notice that as soon as I insert this needle up into here, that the fluid will now run. The next thing that you're going to notice on this IV tubing is the types of ports that you can inject into. We have a regular lure lock port right there, and then we also have these uh, what are called manifold ports right here. So, in the case of a regular lure lock IV port, 
This port has no one-way valves, which means that when you attach a syringe, fluid can actually back up into the syringe. So when I turn on my IV tubing here, you can actually see that uh, fluid starts backing up into the syringe and diluting the drug. So you would never want to leave a syringe attached to a regular uh, lure lock IV port, otherwise your drug could become diluted. So lastly, we've got these manifold ports that are different from these uh, lure lock ports here. A manifold port is cool because they have one-way valves built in that prevent fluid from backing up towards the main line, but it also prevents fluid from backing up into your syringe. So with a manifold port, you can leave a syringe attached or piggyback drip connected, and there's no chance of fluid backing up into the, the piggyback line or towards the main line. Next, we're gonna go over the uh, types of extensions that are available to us. And this tubing right here is called extension tubing, and that's really all that it is. It's used to really just make the length of primary or mini drip tubing longer. The next type of extension that I wanna go over is what's called a saline lock. And a saline lock is going to allow you to disconnect an IV and have it available for later use. So let me demonstrate that right now. Okay, so when you get an IV started, um, without a saline lock, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna hook this IV tubing directly up to the angiocath. But if you have a saline lock, what you would do is you would hook the saline lock up to the angiocath, and then that's going to allow you to hook up this IV tubing at a later time. A saline lock is also going to allow you to clamp this port off and disconnect the IV, and then you still have this IV available for later use if you want. The next type of tubing here is this extension tubing that does not have a roller clamp or any bolus ports. This is um, syringe pump tubing, and in many cases it's non-compliant. We call this propofol tubing. And the use for this is this is going to allow you to connect your syringe pump to the, to the uh, main line in a piggyback fashion from a distance, okay? Without this syringe pump tubing, what you would have to do in order to run uh, a drug through this syringe pump is connect it very close like that and it wouldn't be able to be connected from a distance. Right, I'm just going to show you guys how to use a stopcock in case you haven't used one before. Um, the first thing to know is whatever way that the stopcock is pointing is the off position. So we can see that this syringe is currently off. Um, we can't push anything out of it, but we can push this one. And so if we want to turn this one off, we just simply turn the valve towards that syringe. Now we can't push anything here, but we can push this one, as you can see. And if we want to turn it off to both, all we have to do is put the stopcock valve halfway in between both, or we can close this one over here. And if we want to open it to both of them, all we have to do is turn the stopcock in the down position, and then now we're able to push both drugs. Um, but another thing we want to show is if you have the stopcock in this position, you're able to push one into the other or vice versa.